Great. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes, indeed. Once again, the Woodson Banneker Jackson Bay Division 330 UNIA HCLRC 2020 is bringing to you the Freedom Friday Forum for this day, February 24th, 2023. We've got a good program. You will be awestruck. I am sure of it. But I was warned about my talking too much. So let me get straight to the point and open up. First, we'll do the official pledge to the flag, the UNIA pledge to the flag. I commit my body, mind, and spirit to the protection, defense, and security of the red, black, and green. I dedicate my life to the redemption of Mother Africa and the liberation of her scattered black children. I accept for myself and my descendants the teachings of universal African nationalism, and I promise that our children will be instilled with the purpose and knowledge of themselves as African people in order that the cause of our struggle will neither falter nor fail until all black people are free and united through one God, one aim, one destiny. Now, let me also do the preamble of the constitution of the UNIA ACL, very necessary in our opening. The Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League is a social, friendly, humanitarian, charitable, educational, institutional, constructive, and expansive society, and is founded by persons desiring to the utmost to work for the general uplift of the Negro peoples of the world, and the members pledge themselves to do all in their power to conserve the rights of their noble race and to respect the rights of all mankind, believing always in the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. The motto of the organization is one God, one aim, one destiny. Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind, realizing that if the strong oppresses the weak, confusion and discontent will ever mark the path of man. But with love, faith, and charity towards all, the reign of peace and plenty will be heralded into the world, and the generations of men shall be called blessed. Now for this particular Freedom Friday Forum, I have to do a reading because we are all, we, we, it's necessary for us as a people to understand that it's power that we need as a people, because without it, as I will read from Garvey's words, out of the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Mosiah Garvey, power is the only argument that satisfies man, except the individual, the race, or the nation has power that is exclusive. It means that the individual race or nation will be bound by the will of the other who possesses this great qualification. It is the physical and pugilistic power of Harry Wills that makes white men afraid to fight him. Harry Wills, at that time that was written, he was one of those boxers. It was the industrial and scientific power of the Teutonic race that kept it for years as dictator of the economic and scientific policies of Europe. It is the naval and political power of Great Britain that keeps her mistress of the seas. It is the commercial and financial power of the United States of America that makes her the greater banker of the world, greatest banker. Hence, it is advisable for the Negro, the African, the black man to get power of every kind Power is education, science, industry, politics, and higher government. That kind of power will stand out signally so that other races and nations can see. And if they will not see, then feel. Man is not satisfied or moved by prayers or petitions, but every man is moved by that power of authority which forces him to do even against his will. Power to the people, power to the 
UNIA ACL RC 2020. I hand it over to you, Brother Forest Assistant, President General Senghor Bai. You're really muted, my brother. Yeah, greetings, uh, Baba. Thank you so much. That was a great uh, opening. Uh, we're going to get right into it because we have a very powerhouse tonight uh, uh, focused on not Black history, but African history 365. So without any further ado, we're going to jump right into it and go to President General Akili Malik Nkrumah. Hotel family, truly honored to be here present tonight and sharing this moment with my grandchild who's sitting on my lap. Uh, whenever I'm doing something, she makes sure she becomes a part of it. And I believe that's a part of what this is about. It is not Black History Month, but this is a moment for us to talk about African history and the role that we play as UNIA RC 2020 in the movement of our people toward the liberation that was set in motion many years ago. We hail on Garvey, but let us not hail on personality. Let us hail on the fact that there were millions of us pushing the same agenda. And yet there were also millions of us pushing a, a universal agenda of our same oppression. What I want us to do tonight is understand and discuss where we are. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey was not in this alone. He was not successful by himself. It was a collective energy and power incorporated one by the ancestors that guided him and gave him the strength and by those men and women who supported and took that agenda to the utmost establishment. It became what Europeans feared the most. It became what colored people feared. And I know you say, Bobby, you shouldn't say colored. Yes, I should, because I want to distinguish. There were people in the Negro race that were not supportive of the Negro peoples in the world. We faced Black people who wanted to be white. We faced Negroes who wanted to be slave masters. What we have to understand is economically, politically, socially, and culturally, our challenge was more us than them. We could defeat the enemy if we were unified. The Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League, RC 2020, stands on the shoulders of the elders of the UNIA ACL, trained by them, educated by them, led by them, challenged by them to make this a reality that African people across the world will be free. Not free based on someone else's definition, but free based on who we are. The UNIA ACL RC 2020 is dedicated and committed to moving us forward. We recognize that the UNIA ACL was moving in the wrong direction. It was moving in a falsehood, and we therefore had to change it. So when we discuss the historical aspects tonight, when we discuss the things that our ancestors did, we will be also putting in motion the things that we must do in order to continue to move forward. Because it's forward ever, backward never. So said Kwame Nkrumah. Sante Sana, Brother Singor, First Assistant President General. Yeah, thank you, PG. And uh, of course, we're going to do several rounds and we're going to open it up uh, later so that uh, we can have open discussion. Uh, but right now, I want to go to a dear, we, we know African women rule, y'all. And, and, and you will hear that not only in what Garvey left us, but you'll hear that in what we're doing today. So without any further ado, uh, we're going to go to our Minister of Education, Mama Tendai. Greetings, everybody. It's good to be here. Thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be here and honored to be in position. Uh, this evening, Baba has set the tone already in terms of what it is we purport to be and the direction in which we are trying to go, which is basically true liberation. Uh, involved in education, I want to refer to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey because what he did was to provide a roadmap for us especially in terms of education. 
As he traveled around the world, he educated himself. And in addition to that, he observed everything that he saw. And he was able then to take his observations into his heart and into his mind to understand the conditions of our people. And that basically our conditions were the same regardless of wherever we happen to be in abode. And that therefore our commonality was something that could be worked upon for us to bring about our true liberation. In so doing, what he has done is, is basically follow the pattern of our ancestors from centuries to centuries, because we know that with the development of the most ancient uh, spiritual systems and whatnot, they were developed based upon study and based upon observation. So basically what he was doing was following what his ancestors had done all of those who had preceded him and he continued to do it. And so therefore we are in position that we must do the same. We have the same kinds of challenges that he had at that time in terms of educating our people, because we have, you know, it's as though we have periods of understanding and enlightenment, and then we all of a sudden go into darkness. Uh, and that's where we are in terms of uh, our young people, as I'm most concerned about, and not knowing themselves and not knowing who they are. We have, as um, President General has said, we have our own folk who work against us, even in our youth, because they don't understand the connection that we have to all the people who look like us across the world. So we have a great deal of work to do. Uh, and I guess I will talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but the mere fact that we have identified that we have various categories in which to work upon mind being education. And I'll turn it back to you, Baba. Thank you so much. And that was so eloquently put, uh, it's, it's so on point. Uh, we wanna move right along cause we're gonna do several rounds. And like I say, we're gonna open this up. Uh, our second assistant president general will be joining us soon. She's traveling. So, you know, feel no way we will come back on her. But for right now, we wanna go to professor, my, my good brother, uh, Dr. David Horn, who is the international organizer and also the leader of the um, Marcus Garvey Honor Society. So without any further ado, Dr. David Horn. Good evening, everybody. In the time period in which the Honorable Marcus Garvey created the UNIA as a national and then worldwide organization, during that same period of time, we had the ending of the 19th century in which whites in this country were committed to the idea that being white was better than being black. And black people had nothing to add to the equation except to work for white people. Black folk had not contributed anything of value to world history, according to the white historians, and black people had not created anything of value to American history, according to a lot of white historians. That was something that was called the lost cause. The lost cause was a an idea that was pushed on this whole country, that Confederacy, the, uh, you know, the Southerners who had lost the Civil War, they had fought it and tried to dominate the rest of the country. They fought and they lost. However, there were historians in the South who had laid out this plan to educate generations upon generations of young people to believe, well, we didn't really lose. We fought and we fought courageously and we fought to keep the country together and we should be honored. We should be uh, given praise for that. And we will have statues put all over the country so that people can pay honor to the Confederacy. This whole lost cause idea the idea that history can be written not just by those who win, 
but by those who can grab the pen the quickest. This whole idea about the lost cause history was part of why they had the Springfield riot in 1916, why they had other riots in the same time period, why they tried to burn down Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street in, the, uh, in 1921. It was the same reason why whenever Black folk tried to build capacity, tried to build townships, tried to build cities, tried to build and show that they had a lot to contribute to this country. This lost cause idea said, no, put them down, put them back, make them understand that the only contribution that they can have, that black people can have, is through working for and working with white folks. You are not independently important. You have not really contributed anything. Marcus Garvey said that was a lie. Marcus Garvey said black people have to fight for what they know is correct. The whole idea that we have contributed nothing to history just simply means that those who were part of history decided to grab the pen and write out other people and to only include themselves. History is not always written by those who win. History is written by those who happen to put the information together and then push that idea. If you and I were both part of uh, an occasion, some affair, and I felt that I got harmed, I got bested, I got pushed around during that affair. If I write that history of what happened, I will only focus on me, what happened with me, why I felt bad, and why I must now be given my credit. If you write the history, you're only going to focus on what happened with you. You're not going to care about what happened with me. History is not always written by those who should best write the history. History is written by those who happen to capture the public imagination quickest. You write it, you put it in some kind of media. In 1915, they had this idea that we are going to put this movie out, The Klansman, which talked again about the whole idea that black folk had not done anything of importance except chase white women. Black people had to be put down, black people had to be kept um, uh, corralled, had to be uh, controlled. Marcus Garvey created an organization which said, no, that is incorrect. We are not going to accept that. The black man has been important in world history long before white people ever showed up. All people on earth came from black people. The first black people came out of Africa. All people came out of Africa. Black man, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You don't have to accept what other people say about you. You decide to put your name out saying what you have contributed to the world. The black man has empires, the black man has had civilizations, the black man has created to the world moving forward. Marcus Garvey said, be proud of who you are. We will create this organization, this worldwide organization, which will continue to push the idea. There's much to be proud of. There's much that we need to come together on. There's much that we need to remind the world of that we are the people who must be given our recognition. We are the first people on the planet and we are the people who have created most of what is good about this planet. Marcus Garvey came up with the idea that had already been floating around. He continued the process that had already been laid out by a number of other people, a number of other black folk who had decided we did not have to accept the garbage and the leavings, the, uh, the trash that white people wanted to throw at us. 
we were worth more than that, and we were going to claim what we were worth. The Garvey movement, the Garvey organization, the Garvey government provided a focal point for Black achievement, Black worth, for Black wealth. We need to reestablish Africa as our base upon which the rest of the world will measure us. We need to reclaim our own value. That was why during the 1920s, when this idea of this, these uh, songs that were going around, everybody has a uh, an anthem, everybody has a theme, everybody has, everybody a, has a flag, but the Negro. A flag, but the Negro. Everybody has something that can remind everybody else about what they have done. Marcus Garvey and the UNIA, ACL decided it was time, let's put out our own message, let's put out our own song, let's put out our own flag, let's put out, let us tell the world who we are. Let's put out our own propaganda, so to speak. And so we created the red, black, and green flag, which is still the black flag of black people all over the world. They still use it in all kinds of ways. Again, the Gavi movement said that we have to reestablish the importance of African people. We have to make sure that importance is never ever diluted and never ever taken away. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Horn. That was that was great. I'm glad you laid all that out. Now, uh, Dr. Chen is going to be coming soon, but I'm going to go ahead and share right now uh, in this first round, and I'm going to focus on African fundamentalism and the Declaration of Rights of Negro peoples of the world. And it's very important that we know Garvey lives. We exonerate Garvey. Garvey is in the world when. African fundamentalism is a document written by Marcus Garvey, and it is considered his masterpiece, and is a short summary of his beliefs and mandates of, for African people worldwide. Now, I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to share some of it. So you all hear, because we are carrying on the works, words, and deeds today in the Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League Rehabilitating Committee 2020. African fundamentalism by the right excellent honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And as I said, I'm gonna share some of it, but I encourage everybody that's listening to this that has not read, reread and studied it to do that because it is powerful. The time has come for the black man to forget and cast behind him his hero worship and adoration of other races and to start out immediately to create and emulate heroes and sheroes of his and her own. We must canonize our own mantras and elevate to the positions of fame and honor, black men and women who have made their distinct contributions to our racial history. I'm gonna move down a little bit and read a little more. Africa has produced countless numbers of men and women in war and in peace, whose luster and bravery outshines that of any other people, then why not see good and perfection in ourselves? We must inspire a literature and promulgate a doctrine of our own without any apologies to the powers that be. The right is the black man's and black woman's and Africa's. Let contrary sentiments and cross opinions go to the winds. Oppositions to race independence is the weapon of the enemy to defeat the hopes of an unfortunate people. I'm going to move down some more. When our civilization had reached the noonday of progress, they were still running naked and sleeping in holes and caves with rats, bats, and other insects and animals. After we had already unfathomed the mystery of the stars and reduced the heavenly constellations to minute and regular calculus, they were still 
backwoodsmen and women living in ignorance and blatant darkness. The world today is indebted to us for the benefits of civilization. They stole our arts and sciences from Africa. Then why should we be ashamed of ourselves? I'm gonna move down a little bit more on this document because it's very important. And as I said, I encourage everybody to get the whole document, read and reread and study it. Let no religious scrupules, no political machinations divide us, but let us hold together under all climates and in every country, making among Afro ourselves a racial empire upon which the sun shall never set. Moving down and closing out with last statements from this very important document. Nature first made us what we are, then out of our own creative genius, we make ourselves what we want to be. Follow always that great law. Let the sky be your limit and eternity our measurement. There's no height to which we cannot climb by using the active intelligence of our own mind. Mind creates, and as much as we desire in nature, we can have through the creation of our own minds. Being at present the scientifically weaker race, you shall treat others only as they treat you. But in your homes and everywhere possible, you must teach the higher development of science to your children and be sure to develop race of scientists par excellence. For in science and nationalism lie our only hope to withstand the evil designs of modern materialism. Never forget your cause. Remember, we live, work, and plan for the establishment of a great and binding racial hierarchy, the founding of a racial empire whose only natural, spiritual, and political limits shall be liberty for Africans at home and abroad. Now that document was done by the right excellent honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, and I only read a little bit to you, but you got the you got the drift. Please study it. And the Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World is a very, very, very important document. And in this first Robin, I'm going to share some, and later on I'll come back and share others. But pay special attention to 1, 13, 15, 17, 25, 29, 30, and 39, and 53 of the 54 declarations called for at the 1920 convention held in Madison Square Garden in New York City, where the right excellent honorable Marcus Mosai Garvey was not only elected as the president general, the first president general, but also as the provincial president of all of Africa. No one else has ever been elected the president of all of Africa. We're not talking about the different states. We're talking about the whole continent and all Africans in the so-called, I like to say at home and abroad, rather than the diaspora, but you got my drift. Africans all over the world are entitled to Africa. It is critical that we address it. Let me just read a couple, and I'm going to stop in this round and come back later on. But it's very important to know, be it known that all men and women, that whereas all men and women are created equal and entitled to the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and because of this, we, the duly elected representatives of the African peoples of the world, evoking the aid of the just and almighty most high God, do declare all African men and African women and African children of our blood throughout the world free denizens and do claim them as free citizens of Africa, the motherland of all Negroes, parenthesis, Africans. Very important, y'all. And let me just read a couple more and then I'm gonna pass it back to our president general. 13. We believe in the freedom of Africa for the Negro African peoples of the world. And by the principle of Europe for the Europeans and Asia for the Asiatic, we also demand Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. And let me, one more, and PG coming right to you. And hopefully Dr. Chen is gonna come or we'll go into the second round. And of course we'll let her catch up. 15, we strongly condemn condemn the cupidity of those nations of the world 
who by open aggression or secret schemes has seized the territories and inexhaustible natural wealth of Africa. And we place on record our most solemn determination to reclaim the treasures and possession of the vast continent of our forefathers. Now, as I said, I'll come back later on and share 17 and a couple others in the, in the second round, but let me close on this brothers and sisters. Make no mistake about it. The whole African race needs to be rehabilitated. And in the process of rehabilitating, as Dr. Horn, as our president general, as Mama Tendai has so clearly laid out, we got a lot of work ahead of us. This so-called Black History Month, we don't, we look at Black history all year. Dr. Cottage's, which is the original intent, was all year. So what we're doing tonight is sharing with you where the government of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, African Communities League Rehabilitating Committee, RSC uh, uh, 2020, is continuing the great works of our ancestors. So we stand on our ancestors' shoulders. Many of us are our ancestors. So without any further ado, I pass it to my, our President General, Baba Akili and Kruma. Hotep again, uh, marvelous statements and opening sessions from all of you. And I want to say, as we stand on our ancestors' shoulders and as we review the history of the world, we have to connect it also to our current status. People of African descent learn the lessons, but transition the lessons to present day. Because without bringing that lesson forward, you've not learned the lesson. African men and women, African women and men, let me correct that, African women and men were the first, the beginning. We have been the basis for the continuation of the world. Nothing that you use today in modern technology would work without the continent of Africa. Our cable line is one of the older names, would not work without the minerals, and without the ability to draw those things out of our continent. The materials that we utilize today, the equipment would not function. Even what we're doing tonight, even what we're on tonight. I don't want you just to think of our historical perspectives without a connection to our current day. Because when we talk about the ancestors, such as Mr. Stewart, Thomas W. Harvey, Charles L. James, Amy Jacques Garvey, just to name a few. You say you only made one sister. We can name more sisters. Harriet Tubman. As we stand and talk about that, Tendai, say it. I was saying Queen Mother Moore. Queen Mother, oh, yes. Queen Mother Moore. We stand on those shoulders as well. Our work is to raise us as a people to the level of reclaiming that which is ours. First, by reclaiming who we are and providing the proper definition as to who we are. Our youth say, we need to see, we need to, what well, first you need to understand who we are. And then once you can grapple with that, the modern day challenges become a little more understood and focused. I won't say easy. We know we have police brutality across America and across the world, but we had that in slavery across America and across the world. So it's not new. What's different is how we respond. In slavery, our response was, okay. And I say slavery, but when we were falsely incarcerated without having the ability to determine our own direction, now you're incarcerated. You have the ability to determine your own direction. First, you have to recognize that you are incarcerated and then can provide a definition of what freedom looks like. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey and men before him saw that and then went about trying to bring that to bear, which is why we are where we are today which is why whites today are fighting against us understanding the historical positions that we play. They don't want to teach, quote unquote, black history. 
They definitely don't want to teach African history. They definitely don't want you to understand the, the history of our women and the role they play in what we are. They're not just mothers. African women lead. They provide direction. They move us in the proper direction. When you don't want to go straight, your mama make you go straight. When you don't want to do right, mama make you do right. If you notice in today's world, when they talk about young people and they talk about the guns in the houses, who do they say need to go check? They say, mothers, go check your children's room. I be saying, tell the daddies to go. Tell the uncles to go. Why you got to tell the mama to go? But you know why? Because they know when the mama go, she going to check you. And then they worry that the daddy go, he might not check you. So brothers, we're telling you, you got to stand up and make that cry too. So I'm saying to brothers, brothers, go check your children's room along with the queen. And then when she slapped you for having the wrong thing, brothers, stand behind her, but get in front of her in case that child loses his mind and correct him. Rebuild the basis of our races, rebuilding the family. That family unit is the nucleus of where we have to go. The strength of us is in the sisters and the ability to make them the strongest they need to be is the role of the man. Brothers, go check your children. Brothers, raise up your queen. You see, we want to raise a nation. A nation. I want 54, David, 50, 55 countries. 55 countries, right? 55. 55 countries to be one nation. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey didn't see this. He didn't realize at that time the complexities that would be developed by those who became the colonizers of various parts of Africa. He did not see what was going to happen with the Berlin Conference. He was experiencing it, but he didn't see it. Now we have to see it. We have to recognize that it, when they did the Berlin Conference, when they sat down, they say, we're going to cut Africa up. You get this, you get this, you get this. America say, we didn't ever do no colonization. That's hogwash. We were your colonization right here on these shores. We fought for this nation to exist. And therefore, this nation has to recognize our contribution. And yet white folks today are trying to erase who we are. This isn't. Black History Month for me, as a school teacher, I taught in the independent black institution. I taught African history every day, every day. You know why? Because we live every day and being bombarded by messages that are negative and put us in the wrong light all the time. We have young fellas, 15, 13, trying to kill us just because they think they can gain a material edge. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey and his wisdom, in his wisdom, in the wisdom gained from his mother who went to live with him when he was a teenager. You understand, we don't talk about that. His, Marcus Garvey's mama went to live with him when he was 16 years old, working. She came to live with him. Can you imagine the guidance he was now getting? He had the basis of his strength of his father, and now he had the guidance of his mother, who died while he was young, nonetheless. But for that time frame, she instilled in him the development and the critical pieces that made him fight in Jamaica and Costa Rica and Panama and made him return home after going and seeing the plight of us around the world and saying, I will do something about this mess, this incarceration of my people, gang, bringing together seven people to build the beginning of where we are today, the UNIA, then the ACL then traveling to the States. Senghor mentioned the 1920 convention. Let me say this, it wasn't just at Madison Square Garden. It was at our Liberty Hall in New York City. I say to you today, we're going to recapture Liberty Halls by building new ones, making them 
across this country and across the continent of Africa. We will sit with African leadership and raise African womanhood to the proper level because the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, Amy Jackus Garvey, Amy Ashwood Garvey, Henrietta Vinton Davis, and a host of others. I have a list. It's an encyclopedia of people who made this contribution. So I don't want anyone to think this is just about Garvey. Garvey became the focal point because what America knew, knew to do was to say to kill your enemy, you cut off his head. Garvey was the head that they couldn't kill. By the single, back yeah, to you. Uh, yes, sir. And, and you know, you mentioned some, in fact, everybody has mentioned some very key points, you know, uh, where we are today. We know we have to rebuild the family. One of the biggest things we have to have is black love. Black love is critical, y'all, because I can remember a time when the family was the basis for everything that was done. We have gotten way away from that. We fall in too into Yorugu and individual energy. But anyway, I'll come back to that in the last round. Right now, I want to turn it back over to Queen Mother. And uh, we're still waiting on my dear sister to come. And uh, uh, she's traveling and, and working. But she's promised to come, so she will come. But without any further ado, we'll go back to the Minister of Education, Mama Tendai. Baba. Uh, President General made me think of a few things here. One, U.S. does ha did have a colony, and that's Liberia. Uh, and you're quite order, right. Okay. Right. And in order for you to be able to go to Liberia, you had to embrace the tenets of the United States. You had to be a good Christian. You had to pass what white folks thought was the muster. In other words, you had to be uh, basically a black white person to be able to be, go to Liberia to be in that colony, which is how we ended up with some of the struggles because when our folk went over there, rather than realizing that they had gone home and reaching out to their brethren and embracing them and say, teach me back what I lost. We didn't do it. So they did not do what you said. That is, they did not know self. And as a result of it, we had conflicts in that country for years and years upon years, which is what happens throughout the continent as a result of the Berlin Conference, as you have said there. But I think I would go even further and say, even with our young people now, because they lack the knowledge of the goodness of Africa, and what Africa means to the world, that they hate everything that they see that is, that is black, which means they hate themselves without recognizing it. So it is easy for them to kill something that looks like them because when they're doing that, they are killing what it is that they hate, which is that blackness, that thing. So that's the reason why we can deal with the Tyree Nichols and those, those black police officers beating him to death. They were beaten to death to blackness. Okay, had they understood their Africanness, their Africaniety, that where they had started, and the greatness not just of all of those ancestors who have come before us, but the greatness of what Africa means to the world today. There is no Europe or the rest of the world without Africa, because everything, like you said, Baba that the current world needs comes out of Africa. If Africa were to shut down now, the rest of the world would be, an, it would come to a complete stop because every mineral and every precious stone comes from the continent of Africa. It used to also be the food. But thank goodness we do have, at least have people who are becoming a little wise now. So they are looking at agri agribusiness to go back to be self-sufficient and to sell within the continent of Africa rather than to continue to produce items for the global economy, which does not come back to them and they can't control. Folk don't understand that all of those 54 countries only have one vote in the common market, one vote. And it is the common market that
that sets the standard, the price for goods and services that are coming out of the continent. So you can't even say how much you're gonna charge for your cocoa beans or your tomatoes, or you know the majority of flowers that we get here in the United States is coming out of Kenya. But you can't set the price because you don't have a vote and you can't say what it will be. So you have to depend upon those other nations to determine the value of what it is that you are producing. I would just want to say a couple of other things that one of the things in terms of understanding our current condition, even in the 1920s, the Honorable Marcus Messiah put a great emphasis upon our economic independence. You see, when we uh, as a people gained our political independence in the 50s and the 60s and whatnot in the, on the African continent, that's all we got. And in some instances, we didn't even get that case, case in point in South Africa, where there was political independence. But, you know, when Mandela came in, he had to share the presidency with the man who had been uh, most uh, vicious in the apartheid. And he didn't control the economy and he did not control the military. The same European continued to control those things. So, you know, how can you grow with those kinds of things? So it's in, when I was talking about studying, that's what I'm talking about. Being able to take the experiences that have occurred to dissect them and analyze them so that we can move forward. The other day I sent a note out uh, of this young man who was from South Africa, who was extremely frustrated. And he was saying, the education you all have given us is rubbish because the education you have given us continues to make us be slaves for generations to come. You are putting us, we're already in, we've inherited your debt and we can't move out of it. What was he saying? He said that a child in Germany is being taught how to manage a mine, while a child in South Africa, which the main major business of South Africa is mining, is being taught biology and how to categorize the various animals and bugs and species of the earth. And so what he was saying is, let us make our education relevant. And I think that that is one of the directions that with the UNIA RC 2020, that we will be looking at in terms of making our education relevant so that we can attract our youth and also so that we can empower our youth. Because as we know, the world is, is moves by the economy and by the finances. So when we can combine those two things together, we will be able, to, I think, to move forward. So there are several groups we're gonna to have to deal with though. We have groups of youth and young people and elders who are the willing, like ourselves. Then we have the mass on the other side who are the unwilling. And they're the ones in many instances who are creating the violence and so on and so forth. So we are going to have to put our heads together to see where we can be most effective or what are the strategies we're going to need to be able to educate and move forward uh, with the two groups as we come along, because wherever the masses are is where we eventually are going to have to be. So I just want to wanted to say a couple of little things about that, because with an economic dependence comes then self-determination and ability to move ourselves forward. Excellent. Excellent. Dr. Horn, I think I'm going to share a little bit, then I'm going to come to you. Uh, uh, hopefully by that time, if not, we can alter things around <clears throat> Dr. Chen's arrival. All Africans, brothers and sisters, are ordinary members of the UNIA. Ordinary members. But dues-paying members are those Africans who are willing, as Dr. Tendai just said, or, or Mama Tendai just said, and are prepared to assist in the upkeep and the institutional building of programs and services for Africans both at home and abroad. Now, today, we are in West Africa. We have a high commissioner general in West Africa, 
Chief Fode, this building. We have a division in Gambia. <clears throat> Alongside that, we have a Pan-African library. We're working also to build a Pan-African library in Lagos, Nigeria, alongside the division there. Also in Freetown, Sierra Leone, with Chief Fode and the Black Star Action Network International, and also the Basani division are also gonna build a library because it's critical, as we've already said, that we have to educate and we have to provide the direction of the type education. And of course, we're African-centered, so I just want to say to brothers and sisters that what we need and what we need from you is if you hear what we are saying and you are willing to be a part and partial of helping us build and rebuild the institutions that are required and going forward in the 21st century, coming out of the great legacy of our ancestors, we don't have to re reinvent the wheel. We need to build on the wheels that were already put forth but we also need to roll up our sleeves and do the work because it's critical that we have economic power, black power economically, black power socially, black power education. So that means we have to educate our own and not just at the schools. We have to be, uh, independent education is critical, but we have to use the educational methods everywhere all the time. So as I wanna just share and then turn to my brother, Dr. Horn, the importance of building on the continent of Africa today is critical because as Mama Tendai said, as the President General said, without Africa, there would be nothing. We cannot let others take from Africa like they took many of us out of Africa and to continue to take things out of Africa and not reverse that. We also have to be science par excellence and learn how to go to Africa, not just as tourists, but to build. So we're working in partnership with Basani, who has a pro program where those people who wish to go back home physically can start to mentally repatriate because we've been so programmed by Yorugu that we gotta get Yorugu energy or the system of white supremacy out of us and prepare ourselves for return. For those people that do not wanna get on a boat and go back physically, you need to repatriate your economic development. You need to support what's going on on the continent because as the continent goes, so will we go. Marcus Garvey was very clear. Kwame Nkrumah, Sheikh Arthur Dia, Patrice Lumumba, Julius Nayeri, uh, 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 Shaka, Shaka Zulu, yes. Oh, it's so many that we could mention. You know, uh, everybody likes to mention those people who Mr. Charlie puts up there. But let's mention the people that they don't like or that they actually eliminated, those that were doing the work. But for real, collectively, we need to come together. We also need to build programs here in the States. We need to eradicate the problems that we are confronted with. So we're up against a whole lot to do. But with you joining us, Membership is open. You can join us. It's not, it's not that difficult to become an active member and to help us build and rebuild the institution. But let us be clear. We've been rehabilitating since they attacked our brother Marcus Garvey here in the US of A and incarcerated him for a crime he did not commit. We say we exonerate Garvey. We're not waiting on them to do it. We exonerate Garvey. However, we support anybody that wants restitutionary justice and reparations, we support that. But we are building with other institutions and we call on anybody that's doing any good for African people to connect because in love, you would gotta be together. It's all right to have a lot of institutions more than we had back during the time of the right ex and honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, but let's be clear. The UNIA built factories. They built the Black Cross nurses, which dealt with social services and health and wellness. We need to rebuild that and we are working to do that. There are a lot of ways that people can support us by giving us books, by giving us products, help medical products that can go to Africa. We're also in Ghana. We have the Black Star Division in Ghana. They have a Liberty Hall, as the President General said. We roll in to put brick and mortar in place. We are doing everything in our power, but it's most important that we put the structures together 
for the next generation of young people. And when we say young people, we're talking about anybody 50 and under, all the way down, and we have to catch them early. We got to get our young brothers and sisters early, brothers and sisters. So we got a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm going to turn it back over to our international organizer, who's also the head of an institution that's continuing to teach us, those of us, the course of African philosophy, because it's a fact we got off course. And then we didn't just get off course yesterday. We got off course when they moved on Marcus Garvey and when they began to try to do away with the UNIA, which did not happen because we got a hundred and some odd years under our belt, but they blocked Marcus Garvey. And not only did they block Marcus Garvey and excommunicate him out of the United States illegally, they took away his human rights and Garvey had to come back into North America, into Canada, where he taught the course of African philosophy in 1937-38. Very important. But some of us were able to learn from some who took the course directly from Marcus Garvey and they served as president generals. And then we have now created an institution to assure that anyone that wishes to learn not only the written course of African philosophy, but the experience course that's taught, passed on, the wisdom. And we have quite a few students in that, too many of them to name right now, but they ain't all over 50. Many of them are under 50, some in their 30s, and have successfully passed the course of African philosophy by our president general or myself and or Chief Fode, who is in Africa. So without any further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Dr. David Horn. Ashe, Brother Singor, and Ashe, Mama Tendai. You mentioned something that is, both of you mentioned something that's very, very important, the educational aspect, the Mama Tendai mentioned something that is not well known, but it is in the history books. You just, you just have to look. When they had the European Berlin Conference in 1884, 85, and it was a nine month conference. And the European countries, Western Europeans in particular, set down like gangs and divided up the African continent. Britain, you take these. Germany, you take these. Italy, you take these. When they tried to divide up the land, which was already occupied by, by African folk, the United States took pains to deny that it was present at that conference. The United States has always denied that it was a colonial entity. It has always tried to say, you no, know, we at the United States, we were a colonial subject and we took our freedom from England. We were a former colony. We did not become a colonial state. That's a lie. The history is there, just most people haven't bothered by looking at it because America has continually lied about it. They were at the Berlin Conference. They registered at the conference. They participated in the gathering and they voted. As Mama Tendai said in the uh, in the list server a few minutes ago, what is not well known is that Liberia was America's major colony. The United States invented Liberia and then abandoned Liberia. That's a whole other issue that I want to talk about later, but I'm I'm not going to do it now. But I wanted to at least make that clear. If we go back and relook at some of the historical quote-unquote information that we have gotten 
quite often we find out that information is incorrect. Why do I bring that up? J. Edgar Hoover, who was just beginning his police career as the head of an organization that was not yet called the FBI. It was a federal police agency, but it was on the way to be become the FBI that we all know, uh, Black Panthers and uh, us organization and et cetera, et cetera. J. Edgar Hoover said, there will never be, uh, there can never be a Black Messiah. We don't want Black people to know what has been done to them. Nobody Black will come up and bring Black people together again. Hoover not only said that, he was the mastermind of the police agency that got Marcus Garvey into the courthouse, that got him put on trial. Well, the sham trial, it was not a real trial. The government basically violated its own principles when they brought him into trial and when they convicted him on basically nothing. Um, he'd been accused of about 450 different violations and they ended up convicting him on one which they made up, which they made up. Anyway, just wanted to say amen to the points that the brother Sengor and Mama Tendai had brought up and lead, to lead me to this point. Education again is the key to the development of Africa with African people. Education is where they have been in control. Yes, they have the army. Yes, they have the military. Yes, they have the police forces. Yes, they have the economic control. But it is education through which they have maintained generation after generation after generation this control. That is the fundamental problem in Africa today. They still have the colonial, colonially organized educational foundation in the, uh, on the continent. They are still being trained in their schools based on Euro European precepts. Let's go back a minute. In the 19th century, leading up to the early 20th century when Marcus Messiah Garvey organized the UNIA, the pseudo-scientific community, Europeans essentially, said that the world was divided into three types of people. The Caucasoids, who were in control, who were light-skinned, blondish-haired, smarter people. They were the ones who were supposed to be in control and they were in control. Then you had the Negroids who were born to be the slaves to the Caucasoids. And then you had the Mongoloids, the Asians, and the Native Americans who were born to be conquered, who were born to be pushed aside. The world was divided into three categories of people. And nobody said the world was supposed to be equal. When you look at most of the environment, it was never about equality. It was dog eat dog. It was, if you are not strong enough to protect yourself and your your um, other, you know, uh, babies, then some, some other entity would eat you. That the world was divided into those who could take and those who were having things taken from them. And the Caucasoids were the ones who were the top dog. They were supposed to be able to take from everybody else. God gave them that power. This was the type of education that was being pushed 
in this country and around the world, that the world was divided into three types of people, the Caucasoids, the Negroids, and the Mongoloids. That's a lie. There is no scientific basis for that nonsense, but they put it out and they have been perpetuating it since the late 18th, beginning of the 19th century. They've been pushing that idea. Garvey called them on that and said that is not true. Caucasoids are not inherently better than anybody. Basically, you have been able to steal other people's property. You've been able to write the laws that benefited you and took away from everybody else. You have been able to put yourself in charge by pushing this ideology that he who can take controls and he who can take is in charge. He who can take gets to be lionized, gets to be king of the world, king of the jungle. There will be no people who will be able to successfully challenge that. So here you had Marcus Garvey trying to, not trying to actually doing it, telling black folk that's a lie. You have had your stuff stolen from you, not correctly taken from you. You've had your stuff, your land, your families, your resources stolen from you. These people are thieves. You don't have anything to be ashamed of. Your history has shown what you are capable of. Your history has shown your building of those gigantic monuments and implements in Egypt. White people didn't do that, you did it. They lied and said they did it. Those were African people who did them, all of that. Black people are not secondary to white people. The whole nonsense about Caucasoids, Negroids, Mongoloids, which we have perpetually put in the books, in the educational system, we have taught it all over the world. It is not true. Garvey said it is not true, and Garvey was able to demonstrate it is not true. Didn't just say it. Here's the books, here's the information, here's what you have to know. Read, Black folk, read, educate yourselves. Get prepared to be able to step up to those who've been lying to you and not only say you are a liar, but here's the information that demonstrates that you are a liar. There is no cockadoid, negro, and mongoloid. Those are not the races of mankind. There's only one race, black people. We are the beginning of humanity and we will end up being the end of humanity or we have to take it that far. The essence of what we are saying is that through Garvey's organization, putting together history, putting together information that's necessary Black folk had to be taught or retaught that they are not cursed. They are not bound to be at the bottom of anything. Black folk have everything to be proud of. We have a history that has demonstrated what we are capable of and what we've done and we can do again. To my fellow speakers we have all been trying to demonstrate to everybody listening Garvey and those who work with Garvey and we need to mention the Helen Davis and a number of other folks and uh the other folk who basically not only led the way but did the work leading up to Garvey's day and have continued beyond Garvey's day. Those folks have been trying to get us to remember who we are, what we've done in the world. We don't have anything to be ashamed of. 
until we get here and want to kill each other. That we need to be ashamed of. But in terms of our creation, in terms of our uh, industry, in terms of our in inventiveness, we have helped push the world forward. We are not people without a past. We are not people who have not brought forward positive results to the world. African people are not a deficit. African people are an advantage to the world in which they have always been a part. African people are the first people on the planet. African people are not secondary to anyone. Marcus Garvey taught that, and so are we remembering to continue to teach that. So Dr. Horn, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> both the President General and I are gonna yield to the second assistant, President General, who <clears throat> has successfully joined us. Uh, and we wanna go right to her because we want to hear from her, and I know she may not have heard a lot of things that we've shared, but certainly I know she has quite a bit to share while she has a good signal. So uh, if, if the second assistant president general, Dr. Chenzara Kahini can join us now, please do my sister uh, and uh, join in on the uh, round robins of, of, of basically sharing uh, inspiration, elevation, as well as what we are today. You're muted, sister. Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm give her a little time. I'm gonna go ahead on and she, she'll let us know. Uh, PG, check on her through the chat. Uh, I'm gonna read these things real quick and we, maybe we'll get Dr. Chen up. Hopefully she has a good signal from where she's at. 17, whereas the lynching by burning, hanging or any other means of human beings is a barbarous practice and a shame and disgrace to civilization. We therefore- are you able to hear me now? Uh, yeah, let me finish this, this whole- Finish this, the part, finish the part, boy. Wow. No, but we're coming right to you right after this. All right. Of human beings in a barbarous practice and a shame and disgrace to civilization, we therefore declare any country guilty of such atrocities outside the pale of civilization. Without any further ado, we're gonna to go to our dear sister who is always doing great work in the Caribbean as well as in the world. So without any further ado, second assistant president general, Dr. Chen Zara Kahini. Dr. Chen? <laughs> I know she's traveling and doing work y'all. So when she comes back up, I'm gonna read it 25. Oh, there you Wait. go. Going to uh, show my reason why. There we go. Oh. <laughs> all over the world. Okay. Hey, look, look, we got two powerhouses. You sent, you one. Sent your eyes down here. So, 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 come on, talk to us, y'all. Y'all, we got two powerhouses. Gave a wonderful speech. So, it was very you. much appreciated. Thank you. Yes, all right. Thank you. Y'all were just listening to Dr. Julius Garvey. That was the reason why I was a little bit off on time because. Greetings, everyone. Hotep, let me start with that first. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I am really in honor to just be able to share a reflection, a moment on all that I was attempting to listen to and watch through the evening. When we speak about, we exonerate Garvey, when we speak about the work of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, Amy Ashwood Garvey, Amy Jacks Garvey, I'm actually speaking to the family from the Amy Jacks Garvey Community Center in Jamaica, where they have actually closed out a week long series of activities honoring the works and the reestablishment of the Amy Jacks Garvey Community Center, spearheaded in this regard by Brother Stone right here in Kingston, Jamaica. And this is within the community where the Honorable Amy Jacks Garvey, where the Jacks community like flies and flows, right? So to have Dr. Julia Garvey here and to have an opportunity to have him speak with children, elders, you know, everybody in between sharing his legacy and expressing how important education, how important organization, how important it is for us to work together. So that whole vibration of when we say one God, one aim, one destiny, making it practical 
and putting our resources, our resources, our human resource, our dollars, our long money, our energy, our vibration, our spirit, and of course, that passion, that passion that allows for us to speak truth to power and impress upon the entire globe. We're not anti anybody. We just pro Africa and Africa is uniting. Africa is in liberation mode. Africa is about sovereign power and authority. And we are in that space like, no, 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 no. So to be having the opportunity to even share remarks, I really came here to support the activities and several other sister and brethren that are here. And the next thing you know, as is customary for anybody in the UNIA ACLRC 2020, you videotaping, people asking you to document, take pictures. And then the next thing you know, they're asking you to come on stage and say something. So it's an honor and a privilege to serve as the second assistant president general of the Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League Rehabilitating Committee 2020. And to bring it right here in the center, in the home tribe of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. And again, at this Amy Jax Garvey Community Center, it's like I couldn't have asked for a more ideal opportunity on this Freedom Friday Forum to be able to share that. And I'm grateful for being able to just highlight some of the energy, some of the work that's being done here. I mean, they had all types of artists, Nesbitt, Glenn Washington, artists that I didn't even realize were going to be able to come on such short notice to support this wonderful event featuring Dr. Dewey Scott. And he's still at his, he stayed here the whole time, shaking everybody's hand, talking to all the children, speaking of his work. This is like powerful beyond measure, like powerful beyond measure. We just give thanks and praise that the community here in Kingston was so welcoming. It's like people just coming out the house, people walking up down and the, um, down the road, you're seeing all kind of activity happening here. And it shows us how important it is for us to keep this legacy going. It's important for people to remember that the UNIA still exists and that it is relevant and that it has work beyond measure that each and every one of us is required for each and every one of us to do. Blessed love, blessed love, blessed love. Yes, and, uh, PG, I know you want to chime in here. Uh, Dr. Chen, thank you so much. I mean, you know, we blessed by the ancestral energy. And, right. uh, you know, you 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 are very on time and you write in the home of the right excellent honorable Mark <laughs> Garvey. And you there with Dr. Julius Garvey. And y'all are honoring the right excellent Amy Jocks Garvey. So they couldn't have been no more perfect. It's been set up perfectly. But PG, I want I know you want to chime in right now. I want Dr. Chen to continue because she got one round in. She got another round. <laughs> right now. You go ahead and chime in and we can come in. And after that, we can turn it over to Baba Mosi and we can continue the reasoning. So PG. Okay. And and to all that has been said, education, the challenges, truly the self-destruction shows you self-hate, which was a lesson that we learn from those who colonized us. We learn from those who colonized us the behavior that we project. What we have to recognize is it is time for us to provide the proper education to us, to our youth. Yes, Brother David, you spoke of the Caucasian oil, the what we call the Caucasoid, mm -hmm. the Mongoloid, and the Negroid. And I too have ran into that theory a time or two. And in running into that theory a time or two, it was somewhat of a different challenge. But then when we were in San Diego, a gentleman came up and said, not only as you did that it was false, he said, I can tell you what was right. And therefore, he laid out the fact that we were the beginning of mankind. Right. And therefore, all mankind generated from us. But I also want us to recognize that the thrust tonight in this movement and this conversation is to move us forward. And so you've heard the statement, we exonerate Garvey. You've heard David Horn say what they attempted to convict him on technically was an empty envelope. But really what they convicted him on was the color of his skin. And the mere fact that he had raised the consciousness of millions of men and women of African descent around the world, not just America. 
And that was why ministers went against him because they said, oh, you're going to damage my well-being and my but is an economical well-being. And He's therefore, threat if I to the order. Threat to the order. I'll take that. But yes, because they saw that and recognizing that they went against him. But the reality is the masses of us stood with him, stood with what he taught us. I don't want to make it just him. It was what was taught because there was more than Garvey teaching that message. Garvey is who we hail, but with him were men and women teaching that lesson because what he did was galvanized it from what he learned from his travels around the world. And as he began to teach, people began to move in that way. He didn't just create Black factories. He employed Black people. So black people made that happen. He didn't just have a ship and a ship line. He had black people employed to do the work. He was raising the, the bar. And what the Caucasianoid, AKA the American and European white man saw was a threat to their ability to dominate and control. Because if on the world stage we stand, in our persona, we supersede all of them. We supersede them. You know, so as we say, we exonerate Garvey, what we're saying to the world is white folks, we don't need your justice system to clear his name. We will clear his name through our own creative genius, through our own justice system. And we will teach it and promote it throughout the world. For those who are unwilling and unafraid, those who don't want to work with us on this, I feel for you because we exonerate Garvey. Garvey and the men and women with him work to free us from not just shackled slavery, but mental servitude. Because I don't have to keep you in chains if I lock up your mind. Mental servitude is much more dangerous than being in prison and incarcerated. We have shown men and women in prison with a free mind can continue to do damage to this particular society. George Jackson is one, not the only one, but just one. El Haj Malik El Sabaz, known as Malcolm X, a true Garveyite was another. People ask us, where will there be another Garvey? There have been Garveys, not with that name. El Haj Malik El Sabaz came after Garvey, learned from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was with Garvey, understanding that Garvey's message wasn't just his. Dr. Edward Blyton helped give that message. So, so when they try to focus on one, they figure we get rid of this one. We stop them. We are creating and educating and developing and in growing the women and men that are essential to move us forward. We exonerate Garvey. Today, with Dr. Tinsero happened to bring Dr. Julius Garvey on just for the moment, said to you, we on the right path. We're doing the right thing. And those who choose not to walk with us, that's fine. Because all people don't want to be free. So, PG, yes. you know, we, 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 we're going to turn this over to Baba Mosi, but first and foremost, let me close this out. And also, if Dr. Chen wants to share anything, and then you will come back with a closing uh, message, but we want to open it up and give it back to Baba Mosi. So if they have any questions or any comments, but let me do 25. These are short, but these are important because I said I was going to do them. We further demand free speech universally from all men. 29. With the help of the almighty most high God, we declare ourselves the sworn protectors of the honor and virtue of our African women and children and pledge our lives for the protection and defense everywhere under all circumstances from wrongs and outrages. That was 1920, it was said. Y'all, we in 1923 now, 30. We demand the right of an unlimited and unprejudiced education for all ourselves and our posterity forever. 
We demanded in 1920. And of course we still demand it and we are commanding it and are gonna do it. 39, the colors of the red, black and green be the colors of the African race. Dr. Horn, it, it was done in 1920 by our ancestors. And 53, we proclaim the 31st day of August of each year to be an international holiday honoring to, to observe all Africans. So it didn't start with ALD, it started here in 1920 and 53. So let me stop on that point for anybody that wants to get additional information because we can't put it all in two hours. We can't even put it all in a lifetime. It's so much to share. However, go to the new Black Learning Channel on YouTube and you can see about 170 different videos, including our Freedom Fridays. Most of all of them are posted there. So, but without any further ado, I wanna thank Baba Mosi for having the vision, who is not just a president of a division, he's on the parent body as a minister of information. And it is important to know that. Baba Mosi wears several hats. And of course, a lot of us wear a lot of hats, but the bottom line is we get the work done, but we need help. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Baba Mosi. And of course, Baba Mosi, we will answer any questions if anybody here, but first let me see if Dr. Chenzera, you got a round two, Dr. Chenzera. So if there's anything you wanna share, please share it with us uh, uh, again, if you, if you hear me. Come back on and share whatever you want. We'll turn it over to Baba Mosi and go from there. I need to say one thing, um, Shingo, after Dr. Dr. Okay, Dr. Not, not a problem, not a problem, because we're not going nowhere. I just wanted to turn it back over to Baba Mosi, because this is Freedom Friday of the Woodson Banneker Jackson Bay Division 330. And Baba Mosi has been so gracious to say that we can come on quarterly. We can always get this information out, because it's not just about local divisions. We have a government head and a parent body, and we're building in Africa, in the UK, in the Caribbean, in Canada, and in the US of A, and anywhere else, on Mars. If it's Africans up there, y'all can y'all can get a charter. So without any further ado, Dr. Chen, Dr. Chen Zara. And you were ready for me to speak again? Yes, you got you got some time before we turn it over to Baba Mosi because we got two rounds. All of us had two rounds. All right. No, my my second round. Let me find light so that that I don't. You're looking like good. You're looking good, Queen. Okay, I'm just making sure. I just would like people to make sure they can see me. So, give me a moment, family. It's really an honor and a privilege to just be in this type of an environment to have the opportunity to be in a space yeah. like the. Amy Jacks Garvey Community Center on here in Kingston and to be able to reason with the rest of the family because there's been a lot that's going on here that's very, very powerful, very uplifting. Brother Umoja, please come join me for a moment. Come. Please come. This is Brother Umoja. I'm gonna let him introduce himself because he's doing some very powerful work right here that speaks of our efforts within the UNIA in general. But please introduce yourself. Hey, greetings, everyone. So I'm Umoja from Kingston, Jamaica. So I have a, a BAM hub company. What we do, we look at areas where ending violence against men and boys. So I do a lot of um, social activism in schools, in communities, in churches, in men's school, where I speak to the strong men to give the young men options other than guns. So I'll we exchange opportunities with them. And I'm so happy to meet this wonderful woman. And I can't wait to be a part of your team. I just can't wait. <laughs> it does happen so. Give yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you. That's the kind Ashe, of work we, we try. You know how we just do. We just move like that there, right? The intention is, it's one thing for us because we know that we have the content, the information. We can do all of the academic type of work and the research and the data and all of that. It's really important to be on the ground with brethren and sister. And come, brother, come. Because I need for the family to see why I wasn't here in the beginning portion. Because this <laughs> brethren right here, come, sir. Come, sir. Sorry, you take a did I step no, on no, you, No, you did not. No, no, we're good, we're good. Please, Sorry, we're speak. I know you are. This is the brethren who helped to organize the event. Oh, yes. And the Amy Jackson. I know, Singor, I know you know everybody. Brother Stone, brother Stone. <laughs> Thank you, big up, 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 up. Yeah. Just please tell them we are 
My name is Claude Singley, but everybody calls me Big Stone. Yeah, and I'm Big Stone. one of the organizers of this event. And okay, Starving bro. can host this event with Dr. Julius Starving in a week of activities has been exceptional. So there's Thank more you. detail coming forward. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. 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 Yes, you will, of course, of yeah. course. And again, like I said, the intention was to come and just offer support and strength to these different activities. And we're really giving thanks for being able to see how we can move this work forward, really move this work forward. Come, come Empress, Empress, come, <laughs> come, come Empress. One more person. That's so this right. is the reason that I'm able to do this particular work here because of our sister. Everyone should be familiar with Sister Queen, mother, Sharon Oshun. Ashe. Ashe. My sister, we know African women rule, sis. Hosting us here and she has joined us on a variety of UNIA ACL. Our sister has 20 events and activities. She serves as a media specialist, a business entrepreneur, a Qigong master mistress. No a master, but but she definitely have me walking out there. and doing things while I there. So I don't get a chance keep to her just fit. keep me fit. Right, and keep me centered and strong. So I just wanted the family to really know that part of what we're doing here, give thanks, Sister Queen. And the children are yeah, here. Yeah, the children are with us as well. We got some children. This one here knew the entire all the lyrics to the Jamaican national anthem while the rest I of the I say. But she knew every single lyric, every single lyric. And, I say. And, and the little ones too. So we've had an honor and privilege to really be able to have the community bring a lot of work there doing things here to be able to have educational resources, bring in technology, dealing with tutorials, having an entire curriculum that's really helping these youth because here in Jamaica, they have made it part of the national thrust that the teachings of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey are inclusive in every single institution. Now that is pretty serious because we have challenges doing all of that. We won't have the CRT conversation tonight. But I just desired for the family to know that there are some really positive things happening here. We're looking forward to being able to share more. And it's always an honor and a privilege to be able to identify. When we say we exonerate Garvey, it looks something like this. When we Ashe. exonerate Garvey Foss, then we don't need their permission and all of their little right. pray, 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 because it's coming from us, our African ancestral, original, sovereign powered people. Beach. Bus, bus, bus. So give thanks, family. It's been an honor and a privilege to just be able to share some of that energy. And you know how they say, I'm feeling good. <laughs> we feeling it with you, sis. We feeling it with you. I mean, like, you know, you can't, you got to stop and tell people in, in the middle of the community because we're like right center in the community that they've brought this and I'm looking forward to us being able to build some more. And, you know, I'm almost ready to find out maybe this is another Liberty Hall. I don't know. Yay, it's a really powerful <laughs> of what's going on. I'm just saying, you know, it's been positive because I've anticipated having some of the other brethren and sister that are, you know, part of UNIA International here as well. And as I keep trying with the strength of our illustrious President General, Baba Akili, Malik and Kruma, first assistant president general, Baba Singor, by Baye. I'm just like, I'm just saying, you know, Secretary General, Queen Mother Mary Botha, you know, our High Chancellor Sedwa and Kruma. I can go down the list. Baba Mosi, you know how we stay. You know how we stay. So I'm just saying, Baba Zama, everyone that is able to make this work flow. These are some of the other spaces and places where we begin to share this work. And I'm just doing my small part as the second assistant president general and high commissioner general of the Caribbean Americans. Give Bam. thanks, my sister. Give thanks. Give, give, thanks. give, thank, give thanks, for, Dr. Chandler. Give thanks for that. And let me just say also uh, uh, before David and then I go to Baba Mosi that we also honor Malcolm Shabazz and the whole Shabazz family and uh, Reverend Little. By, uh, uh, Malcolm, because because someone put in the chat, and we want to make sure everybody knows that whole family was Garveyites. No, right. even before Malcolm became a Garveyite, his mother and his father were in the UNIA. I want to make that clear. And Malcolm Shabazz is who directed our High Commissioner General of the UNIA in West Africa 
to the UNIA, even though he's an ancestor now. So we want to hail up the whole Little and Shabbat's family. Uh, David, go ahead, and then we're going to come right to you, Baba Mosi. Dr. Horn? Yeah, very short. Mama Tendai put something in the chat that I wanted to make sure we all paid attention to. Proper education about one's place in the world is a revolutionary act. We have to keep pushing that revolution. That is Gavian. Absolutely. And, and at home and abroad, I, you know, we talked about yeah. Africa, you just heard directly from Jamaica, because our, our second assistant is on the ground in Jamaica right now. And we hail up Amy Jocks Garvey, as we always say, PG, African women rule. Without any Absolutely. further ado, Baba, Baba, Baba Mosi, like I said, Baba Mosi, take off your president hat and put on your parent body hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, everyone. Greetings, greetings. You know, it's such a joy to be on this program here this evening, I tell you. Um, and just just watching the second assistant there in Jamaica, you know, enjoying the family, I mean, spirit. You know, it's, it's like the spirits are there. Yeah. Amy Jax Garvey, the power of that senior sister, Queen. The, the one who has done so much to make our honorable founder be part and parcel of the history of this world without her it might have been very difficult but she did what she had to do and we are here as witness that marcus garvey lives yep. as we speak his name marcus garvey lives we exonerate him despite what anybody else may say I she I is it. not guilty of their accusation now, what I would do is uh, and not get into too much talking, but to um, <laughs> see if other folks are, <laughs> see if other folks who are here with us uh, in the panel here, uh, if they have anything to say or if they want to ask any questions, uh, I give them the floor. If not, and we don't want dead air, so, you know, you, if you're not quick with this, I'll, I'll have to move on. Okay, seems like we don't have any questions. Uh, so, if uh, if you if you have to if you have to turn this over to someone else, Baba Sangor, I think maybe you should do oh, so. Oh, oh no, actually, if you have any questions, any comments, and the President General, of course, is going to share, or uh, anybody else that want to share this in the Zoom, that's a member want to share we want to open it up now we right. know we know that division 330 likes to keep this zoom to two hours but you know, we could always do it again Nine minutes <laughs> but we're moving we're moving on yes we're moving on okay anybody yeah. else no, it don't seem like we have any questions we've got dead air right now so well no no okay no, no dead air yeah, uh, there's, there's so, always something. so before before we go to closing remarks, there's a couple of things I like to bring to to the front. One, we have political prisoners today that we need to incorporate in this discussion. You may say is that history, what's history is the fact that this isn't new. Here we have Mumia Abu Jamal, been a prisoner falsely accused of murdering a police officer. Of, when I say falsely accused, they never proved it in all totality. They only proved it to themselves. We also have the mere fact that the MOVE members were victimized by this particular structure of the police brutality here in Philadelphia. So let's not forget them. Let's not forget Fred Hampton Jr. Let's not forget them. Let's not forget George Jackson. Jamil let's not forget them. That's right. Jamil See, Mom, Jamil because because as we exonerate Garvey and Congo put in the H. Rat Brown, as we exonerate Garvey, let us also realize that we will list the men and women whose name needs to be on that list. There's a sister Asada Shakur. Yes, mm -hmm. we it's need to make sure that we raise that up. We mentioned 
Malcolm Shabazz early, although he has transitioned. I want to say to everyone, the most memorable point is that I was the first to work with him in the reading of the book of his grandfather, Malcolm X. That was the book that I taught him from. And I take that not as it was me, because he was at the Marcus Garvey Shule of Positive Education. Therefore, it was many. But I had the opportunity to say, you don't know your grandfather, you need to know. The opportunity to take him to the UNIA ACL at that point in time. It is important that we chronological add the historical aspects of our history to this discussion. Right. The mere Eddie, fact. Eddie Conway. Eddie yeah, Conway. And, and Rochelle McGee. And we, right. Eddie Conway and, is now and, and Rochelle McGee is still locked up too. And right. also to bring to bear the fact that we are instituting the Marcus Garvey Institute and the Honor Society under Brother David Horn. So that means that's a forward step. See, we're not stepping backwards because we bring into play the history. We're moving forward with the history as the foundations for the steps we take. You see, history to me is yeah. the motivation for our movement because it gives us clarity of our deeds and actions. Right. Even though they gave us false education, the one thing that is true to life is that we have 7,000 years of history and they only claiming two. Oh, teach, bro. We want to <laughs> hail up. We want to also hail up while you're doing that because there's certain ancestors we want to mention. All of them are with us, but Dr. Tony Martin, uh, Renoko Rashidi, yeah. you know, Farouk Muhammad, Kamal Robinson, you know, Alma Golden, Sadie you know, Madison, Sadie Madison, yes, 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 uh, Andy Thompson, yes, Marcus Garvey uh, Jr. So many, Marcus Garvey Jr., exactly. It's so many ancestors in the world win with the right ex and honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And let's don't, let's don't forget that the African ancestors, that, uh, that are ancestors that, that were traditional Africans on the continent, those yes. names we want to remember Queen too. Queen Nzinga. Right, oh, yeah. Julius Nzinga. Right, Julius right. Julius right. Nerebe, Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah. You know, yeah. Uh, exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Patrice Lumumba. And the, and the powerful sisters, like we want to mention. Yeah, Patrice Lumumba. It's yeah. so many. That, that, that in fact, it's more of them than us, y'all. So when we say we stand on their shoulders and they, they their uh, Mama Tendai speak to us, when we speak to the ancestors, do they speak back to us? They do, if we meditate so we can hear. Oh, see, that's what and I'm we pray, about. we talk, we have to be quiet so we can hear. Okay, okay. Right, I so say. all of y'all out there, y'all y'all build y'all African altars. Put your ancestors, you know, just because we didn't believe in, and President General always say life to life. And I love that. And that is very important because we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. That's yes, right. Sir. Yes, sir. Life to life. I only wanted to say something about Malcolm. The reason why I brought that up is because even in the continent of Africa, you had young people walk around with a Malcolm X hat on, a Malcolm oh, yeah. X shirt, oh, yeah. but they don't know Malcolm's history. Right. And so I'm pushing out there saying, that is one of the vehicles that we will be using and linking to help people understand how Malcolm was involved and how he came from a Garveyite family and that formed the foundation of Absolutely. who he became, who no. he eventually stopped fighting and, and accepted. And embraced, that's right. And, and, and let me mention Thomas Sankara, who yes. followed Malcolm and Garvey and Nkrumah. Yes. Because uh, he right. ran a country. I mean, so yeah. we, uh, he ran a state. So we need to know how many ancestors have done great work. But uh, uh, Baba Mosi, uh, if nobody else in here, if, if anybody wants to ask a question in the chat, they can do that too. But Baba Mosi, you said 90 minutes. I thought we went from 7.30 to 9.30. We used to go 7 to 9. So I just want to make sure that- There was a grace period, the 20 minutes grace period. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure we're not, we're not changing the game because you know, you got some Garveyites, you know, we all long-winded. We got to, yeah. but here's, here's what's really deep. It's the spirit of Blacktricity. Blacktricity is in us, y'all. That's Garveyism. Mm. That is Garveyism because if it were not for our parents and our aunts, our, our, our grandparents and our great grandparents, we would not be. And the love that they held together to take us through the tragic period of the transatlantic slave trade. I mean, if they could, if they could hold the love together, the way they were separated physically, the way they were brutally, we can do it now. Yep. Yes, indeed. Amen.
<laughs> okay, well. Uh, Julius, Julius, you got a question? Oh, that African fundamentalism piece that you started with has to be a study piece. Yes. Yes. As well as the particular sections have to be documented and updated to today. Yes. Because that name is list has gotten so much longer. Yes. Now. Absolutely. That's, That's a that monumental piece. It came before the course of African philosophy was written. Yes. Yes. And also the also the Declaration, so the Declaration of Rights of the Negro both Rights. Those, both of those documents, Brother Julius, are, are as you say, very critical. Because when I first heard about Garvey and I read African fundamentalism, I was floored because he said so much in, in, in two pages. That's it was right. just it's just so powerful. And it and it and it's about what we all been talking about. But anyway, Amy Jacques made a poster of it and it had it for sale after the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's uh, right. We're, we're coming back to that, bro. Uh brother man. Yes. Sure because have to come back to that. No, because as that's you one look, of the things we need to rec resurrect. African fundamentalism. Put it on the poster. Yeah, because the the Negro Bill of Rights that was done, I think, was one of the most outside of the Constitution, one of the more prolific documents that we did at that particular point in time. Recognizing here today and addressing the Negro Bill of Rights, we have to address it from where we stand. We have to address it from this time frame. We in RC 2020 are currently under the process of attempting to address that, to try to bring it into this century without losing the, the foundational pieces that our ancestors gave us, where, where we don't get lynched, and that was what they faced. We get brutally murdered by police. We get incarcerated for the rest of your life and you're a teenager for a crime you didn't commit and you spend 60 years and then they find out oh or they decide to say yeah we recognize you weren't guilty so those negro bill of rights have to be redone and we may not want to say a negro bill of rights we may want to say an african people's bill of rights because on the continent of africa there's also been atrocities that those bill of rights need to address in Haiti, there are atrocities that the Bill of Rights needs to address. We have to take a particular world view in this century as our ancestors did in that century because it wasn't just the Negro that got lynched in America, the Negro on the continent of Africa got lynched too, which is why Garvey said to the Ku Klux Klan, you keep lynching my people and we going to lynch you back because we got more trees, more trees in Africa you than you do. You and, see, and let's and, our brothers in South America and sisters in South yes, America, which make up. We, and we will speak to, we have to, yes, because, because one of the benefits of I've had in working with Dr. Chinzira is being exposed to organizations that represent South America and having the opportunity to speak to them and recognizing that we aren't alone in this mess. We are not alone. <laughs> we are not. And what we have to do is move ourselves collectively forward because we want to address the atrocities in St. Croix, the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas. So our next Bill of Rights for the African is going to take into consideration everything we experience now. And as we look at African fundamentalism and not change it, but adapt it to what we face globally. This is a global movement. That's why the European feared the UNIA, ACL in the 1920s, because they knew it would be a global movement. That's why they banned the Negro world from South Africa, because it was a global movement. And I, I understand how that happened, being an editor of a newsletter that traveled around the world, I know the countries that did not want the Africa news to be there. Understanding that we are changing the dichotomy of the world. The UNIA ACL Rehabilitating Committee 2020 looked at where we were in 2020. Realized, but let me finish, and realizing then that the direction that it was moving was incorrect and not going to move us, move the needle. We're going to move the needle. Go before, ahead, your, before your closing, closing remarks, I just want to let people know uh, what we are doing currently. We are 
rebu rebuilding the propaganda me machine. So we're not only going to be bringing pictures, we're bringing the Garvey's voice back and the Garvey's voice is coming back. We are working to uh, in, uh, ameliorate ourselves as well as we calling for our African race to ameliorate itself. So I want everybody to understand no matter how conscious you become, no matter how conscious you become, until Africa is free and under our control, you're not conscious enough. Okay. Thank you. All right. Of, of, the, 19, of, of the, the 1920s um, and the move by the Department of Treasury, which was J. Edgar Hoover, against Garvey was that the major corporations operating mining, mining sites in Africa were starting to have riots and labor unrest being provoked by Garvey messages. And they put the call out on the Department of Treasury to shut that man down. I hear you, bro. Well, you know- they, this they, the, the, Yes, you're correct. The governments, Britain, France, they all did. That's why they also once they incarcerated him and then deported him, banned him from traveling to specific places because they banned him from the countries where the unrest was there. They banned him and would not allow him to travel. So he was only to travel from Jamaica to Canada and then to England. That was almost the limit of his traveling at that time, realizing that prior to that, he was moving about the world. Uh, making it known and, and doing his business, doing his work. He did the people's work. You know, I, I work with a gentleman here, um, Omadali, Omadali, and he always says, you got to do the people's work, brother. You got to do the people's work. So as long as you're doing the people's work, you're a threat to the, you're a threat to the establishment because the people's work is the work of freedom for people of African descent. He's a real elder brother. He's finally retired from activity. I think health has gotten that. But the reality is it doesn't change. We still got to do the people's work. When they did the Million Man March, we worked here in Philadelphia to send people to D.C. I had the opportunity to help coordinate. When we did the Million Women March, I had the opportunity again to help develop the security for that, doing the people's work. See, when you do the people's work, you get called, you get called and you got to go. Garvey recognized he had to do the people's work. See, we, we have to make sure we recognize what Garvey did. Garvey faced Black people that wanted to be white, but he also faced a condition to where Black people were identified as white and gave a different scenario than other Black people. See, so when he used the word Negro, there were black men that were labeled as white men who had a different status than other black men. And they were absolutely unencouragedly against using the word Negro and or starting any kind of world movement to change state status quo. We became so indoctrinated and self-centered to an economical system, therefore, that we were not only lost, we were anti-us, which is, again, part of the problem that we face now in the world, being anti who we are because we've accepted the definition of us by others. We have to define ourselves. And therefore, we have to let the world understand, you don't want to be a Negro, that's fine. But you is an African, ain't no choice. And you will never be defined as a white African because ain't no African white. I always had a problem with the people that went to in, in South Africa calling themselves Africans. They ain't Africans. They from Britain. Call yourself a British. Call yourself Britain. Call yourself French. Call yourself Italian. Call yourself whatever you are. But stop trying to make yourself what I am. You want to be me because you know this is how the world began. We African people. We exonerate Garvey. Thank you, PG. Yes, sir. Is that your last word? If you want it to be. But well, if not, no, no, I'd... No. <laughs> <laughs> no, <just> go there. <laughs> no, because... I'm, I'm on your time schedule, but just yeah, well, I, I, will, you know, I will give a last you, word. You, you, you've said quite a bit that, that's powerful stuff here this evening, and, and most... Almost everyone has. I, mean, I shouldn't say almost. Everyone, everyone has, yes. 
they have said very powerful things. Just, uh, just it's, it's a lot for our folks out there to digest. Those of but us who are on now, those of us who will be on when they. But go just as a closing remark, okay. as a closing remark, as a closing remark. All right. UNIA ACLRC 2020 is moving forward. Single mention the Gavi voice. They have Dr. Tendai. I mean, Mama Tendai to move us in an educational direction uh, better than we have. We have Dr. Tenzera, who is science par excellence to help us make sure that we are touching things in the proper fashion. We have Brother David Horn, who's providing a mainstay in the reference of education. We have Sister Ania on our legal side. We have others. We have Mama, Mama Mary Bolta, and she is a historical encyclopedia of wisdom because of her time. Even though I believe I have more time than her, she got more wisdom than me. <laughs> and I recognize that. So I want folks to understand where the UNIA ACLRC 2020 is going. And I want anybody out there that claims to be a Garvey Act, anybody out there that claims to understand the El Haz Malik El Shabazz or any other Black men and women of the world outside of Shakur to recognize that stand when, standing with us is standing on the side of right. The side of right does not choose what political view you have. You stand on right. Exonerating the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey is right. I'm not asking. I'm not begging. I'm not petitioning. Last year, as President General, I exonerated Marcus Messiah Garvey. All we have to do is put it in the minds of African people around the world. I watched the news put in African people's mind that we kill each other and we got to have that something done about that. And we got to be locked up to do that. I watched that being put in our mind. And then I watch people speak it. I want to put in our minds, we exonerate God, which means we can end violence in our community because we build the foundation for our community to respect and love each other and realize how important each of us are. Because anytime I hurt one that looks like me, I hurt me. In the city of Philadelphia, just yesterday, seven people shot around an elementary school. A two-year-old was the youngest one shot hit in the leg. A two-year-old, two. You're going to tell me that those Males who got out of that car who had my color understood what they were doing and who they were? No, sir, they did not. Because there's no message to tell them. What there's a message to tell them is that this is how you do stuff. And yet they get no education to do it. I understand that that's truly how the European has dealt with his society the whole time. If you look all the way back, every time he settled somewhere, there was conflict, there was war, which is why you have the police department built to be warmongers. It's what it's built for. It, it was it came from the slave patrols. And who were the slaves? Hello. So who were they trying to get? Hello. And so why are you acting like you can get us instead of letting them get us? You're more slave hunter than the slave master. We got to change that thought process and move thought process and move it forward. So with that being said, RC 2020, the UNIA ACL RC 2020 Rehabilitating Committee are rehabilitating not just the UNIA, but the African race. And on that, I say, Asante Sana, thank you, Brother Baba Mosey, for giving me an opportunity to speak. Thank you, President General Killian Kroon. Now, with what you say being the last word, I will say this to those folks who are watching, those who will be watching. You have heard the voices of the leadership of the UNIA ACL RC 2020. You've heard their exhortation for you to raise your consciousness as to who you are and what's need to be done. And to join us in the fight to remove us from the malaise that we are in today. The PG mentioned some of the issues, gun violence and ignorance. Some of our leaders have spoken about education. We need to get beyond the period where we're at this, this on education, because if you are going to do those violence as PG has said, you cannot be someone who is educated. 
regardless of what piece of paper you may have coming out of high school or wherever. Now, I, I should think about what, you know, our famous Garveyite Amos Wilson said, and that is that, you know, the problems we face today flows from, you know, the, the powerlessness that we have, our, our inappropriate use of power, and that we must change that. Here we are in the UNIA ACL RC 2020. For you, those of you out there who have just heard what our leadership have posed to you, you, you need to join us. You need to join us, take up the weapons. And the weapons, we're not talking guns, we're talking weapons of education, we're talking the weapons of consciousness. Take up the weapons of consciousness and education. Join us so that we can remove ourselves from the situation we are in today. RC 2020 continues because Garvey lives. Garvey lives. Garvey lives. Now, PG, I'll bring this to an end. And I will thank everyone who has been on and who has said, a chance to give their voice to the people out there, those in Africa, those in the African world, everywhere. You are part of us, we love you. It's about Ubuntu. And with that, I'll say one God. One God. One aim. One aim. One destiny. One, one destiny. Peace and love. Peace and love, Amandala. Amandala, forward man. Yes, indeed. Thank you all. Uh, Brother Heru, 